Welcome to the Fast Track of Innovation, a data-driven podcast. Here, data isn't just numbers, it's your superpower, sparking stories of success from bites to breakthroughs. Dive deep into insights from the Data-Driven Conference, where data heroes assemble. Ready to supercharge your data journey? Strap in, it's time to get data-driven. Sponsored by Reltio. Reltio's AI-powered data unification and management cloud capabilities encompasses entity resolution, multi-domain SaaS, master data management, or MDM, and 360 data products. Reltio helps enterprises transform poor quality data from disparate sources into unified, trusted, and interoperable data. All right, welcome to another data-driven podcast. I'm Chris Detzel, and today we have special guest Sushant Rai. He's the VP of Product Management at Realtio. Sushant, how are you today? Very well, Chris. How are you doing? I'm doing well, man. One of the things that we want to talk about is this idea of the intersection of AI, data management, and product development. A lot of things are being talked about around AI, and so you're one of our experts. You've been in this all day and every day. What do you think, Sushant? Good topic today? No, it is the most exciting topic these days to talk about. I'd love to have a great conversation. First of all, thanks for having me here. And I'd like to share our journey, what our thoughts are around the enterprise with market where customers are dealing with this question around the IML living single day. So it should be a good conversation. That'd be great. And so before we get started, Tell us a little bit about yourself, how long you've been with Relteo, what you do at Relteo, all the, maybe a little bit before what you did, that kind of stuff from a career standpoint. All right. Yeah. So I need the product management or core data unification platform at Relteo, all the IML initiatives and all the new products that we are building here. I've been here for almost uh, four years now, and I must say that it has been a really exciting journey. Mm -hmm. I've been enterprise soft software all my career, right? I would say another. 18 years in different companies before Realtio. But I must say that the scale and impact Realtio products have on business outcomes for our customers, it's, it's hard to match, right? But as I said, as I said, really exciting journey, really having fun here. Good. And the world's changing. So we'll talk about how that is with kind of the, as we think about the general trends in AI and like enterprise adoption. So let's get started, man. Sure. What are some of the primary drivers for like businesses adopting AI technologies today? And how, before we, how do these drivers vary across the different industries? Maybe give us some examples of how AI is being used in, in some of these industries. Yeah, that's a great question. So we have seen that, that adoption of AI technology, right, specifically, is driven by desire to improve efficiency and you know, improve decision making enhance customer experiences, and just improve business responsive to in today's increasingly digital and data-driven business landscape, right? Let's break them up one by one. The very okay. first uh, problem that everybody is trying to address is how to increase efficiency in anything we do. And AI can automate tasks, repetitive tasks, streamline processes, optimize operations, which ultimately leads to increased efficiency and cost savings. It's, it's very important in these macroeconomic times to have these as business goals, right? If you see from, from an industry perspective, from automating tasks in manufacturing assembly lines to streamlining logistics and retail, AI can free up a lot of human capital and reduce costs for enterprises. The second big driver is data-driven decision-making, right? AI-powered analytics provide businesses with valuable insights from large volumes of data that they already have, right? and enables more informed and data division decision-making. There's no depth of data, right? Data was always there and enterprises are generating data like never before, but synthesizing data and getting insights to make, as I said, data-driven decisions is really the key here. Industries like finance, right? Can analyze this data to uncover hidden patterns and optimize risk management, right? Reduce frauds or healthcare, industries in particular, right, can personalize treatment plans for its patient, right? So different applications from the data customers have or they are generating on a day-to-day -day basis. The third driver, I would say, is 
personalizing customer experience, right? Mm. I would say AI yeah, business enables businesses to analyze customer data and behavior to deliver personalized experiences and recommendations, right? Through techniques like machine learning and natural language processing, some of it what we are also doing at Trilteo, companies can understand customer preferences and tailor products and services, do type of, uh, targeted marketing campaigns, and lead that. All of that would lead to improved customer satisfaction and loyalty. Right? This is particularly helpful in retail and consumer products industry. Right? Retailers are leveraging AI for chatbots and product recommendations based on the past behaviors or purchased patterns, right? Travel companies are using it for personalized itineraries, again, based on past behaviors or the demographic data of, of their customers. So wide range of applications across the industry for this particular factor. And, and finally, I would say a very important thing is business responsiveness, right? What we have seen in, in our customer landscape as well, that the, the digital world is changing rapidly, right? And adopting AI can provide that competitive edge in today's evolving business landscape. Companies that will harness AI for innovation and differentiation will stay ahead of competitors by introducing new products or services, optimizing their business processes by automation, as I mentioned earlier, and simply by adapting to changing market demands more quickly and efficiently. So this particular part, this factor is going to be applicable across every business and every industry that customers are going to our business as well have to improve their business responsiveness and AI is going to play a major role in that. Yeah, and I'll, I'll give you one example because you mentioned sales and marketing and how AI is being used. I've seen this technology that helps BDRs with emails. BDRs are always emailing prospects and trying to get them to learn about different products within an organization. One idea or one technology that I know of I won't say the technology, but is automating those emails, personalizing those emails, making it look like, seem like it's a real person. And then it just takes a lot of time off those BDRs to go do more. I wouldn't say they'll do more of their tactical kind of day-to-day -day type stuff. That's just one of many of the examples. So it's changing. And speaking of that, do you think Relative customers are building some of their own AI, AI models or are they turning into like off-the-shelf Gen AI? Uh, I think... It really depends, right? Mm -hmm. So decision to build uh, their own models for Gen AI or using off-the-shelf models depends on multiple factors. And I would say how much weightage these factors have, they differ from business to business, right? Yeah. So for example, how personalized or context-specific you want your Gen AI model to be, right? Typically, off-the-shelf models lack business context for a particular industry, right? That, that could be a limiting factor. How data security and privacy compliance across the business is going to affect, right? Using, building on their own or deploying their own or using off the shelf models, right? Do another fact, key factor is what kind of expertise or talent customers already have, right? To build these models from ground up, what is the ease of implementation or maintaining it for long term, right? And what is the time to value? Will they spend six months or 12 years to build a model and then get value out of it and constantly tune it to get the results that we're looking for. So multiple factors that, that affect this decision, right? There's no one-size-fits-all model that customers are going to adopt. That's not going to happen, right? Based on requirements, urgency, or on time to value and data that they have, customers make this decision. In our experience, customers typically look for a hybrid approach that gives them high time to value, data security, right? And specifically, the models are responding to their business context, right? And this is what we are noticing across relative customers as well. Right? We are ourselves have provide Gen AI capabilities to our customers and, and we focus on all these factors and the capabilities that we provide. I've got a big question for you that's coming up and, and I'm very curious to see how you answer and then we'll get into the Realtio story. But given that like AI systems rely heavily on data, how do these issues with data quality affect AI outcomes? And what steps do you think companies could take to ensure that their data is ready for AI? It's a big question. <laughs> it is, but I think it's a very important one as well, because I believe every business is dealing with it, right? I would say issues with data quality can significantly impact the outcomes and effectiveness of AI models in multiple ways, right? Accuracy, for example, right? Poor quality data can and will lead 
directly to inaccurate AI predictions or decisions, right? Yeah. Whatever your insights you are expecting or you are getting, poor quality will give you poor decisions. It's, it's as simple as that, right? If the training data built to use to build or train AI models contains errors or inconsistencies, the resulting models will produce unreliable or misleading results. The second part is like robustness, right? AI models that are trained on low quality data may lack robustness or generalization capability. You can use a small training set data, but when the models will be asked to make predictions to on handle unseen or new data, those predict the quality of those predictions or decisions was going to will be will suffer for sure. Right? Yeah. The third big one that 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 is be customers facing everywhere is bias, right? Data quality issues such as imbalanced data sets or bias sampling can result in AI models that perpetuate or amplify existing biases present in the data, right? Or this can lead to unfair or discriminatory outcomes. And we have seen examples of this, whether it's a hiring policy that is discriminating or picking only certain kind of candidates and we have seen or in lending that you are making unfavorable decisions for because of a certain bias. This is particularly, I would say, a dangerous one, right? So investing time and money to train an AI model in low quality data is is like wasting your resources, right? Customers will end up with a model that needs to be scrapped and labeled entirely. Yeah. We have to understand a very important thing that data drives AI, right? Data is getting generated at a massive scale across the enterprise. And this and it is fragmented at the same time, right? This fragmented data has no ownership, is of bad quality and duplicated across the board, right? Yeah. So the very first thing enterprises need to do is like data unification. It is the first and the most important step for customers to get high quality data that they need for their AI initiatives. Data needs to be cleansed, enriched, and unified to be fit for any insights or predictions that the customers want to get out of them, right? The importance of data unification in complex entire enterprise environment is increasing every day as the AI momentum continues to grow. Yeah. How do you, how does Reltio really think about AI and ML? What do you, what is it that you guys are doing or thinking about from say us really? Yeah. So I would say we have a three part story here, right? I would say we are thinking it in three distinct categories or three distinct areas and investing in all three at the same time. Right. The way I call it is built for AI, built in AI and built with AI, right? So what is built for AI, right? Solving the data issues we just discovered in the customers to unlock potential for them, right? Yeah. We help solve the gap in data trustworthiness that our customers have, which prevents them from realizing all the AI benefits that they can, right? All the things we just spoke about on how bad data quality affects them, right? So we connect the first party data to models and models to data, right? We provide that high quality tested unified data in real time for our customers to build models on top of it and then get the accurate predictions and decisions that they need to run their business. The second is building AI within the capabilities, right? So which we call built in AI. Second, we are integrating AI ML into our own products, to improve efficiency and productivity for our users, right? Yeah. So our what we are calling applied AI, which is applying AI across our platform capabilities that will deliver 10x the value, 10 times the value for our customers than doing it without AI ML, right? So infusing AI in our capabilities. And the third is build with AI, right? Just like we want to improve productivity and efficiency for our customers, we are also empowering our own teams to build with AI, right? We are using AI ML ourselves to build our products, right? For high productivity, right? Reltians, right? All Reltians use latest tools to increase their own experiences and productivity, whether they're in product teams or their engineering teams to build these capabilities. We are fully in, fully invested in every single area where wherever we see an opportunity or a problem that we can solve with AI. Yeah, and Rocktail's been doing AI and ML for a little while. Obviously, the approach, I think, probably evolves over time. Can you talk about that evolution from a few years back till today? With oh, yes, definitely. I think you're right. As the AI, ML, and the technology has evolved itself, right? I think we, we constantly need to think in our approach as well. So, Reltia has been a market leader in data unification, right, for years, right? 
we integrated AI ML in products a couple of years ago. Okay, I would say ahead of the market. But the approach was different at the time. Yeah. What we did was we enabled our customers and provided with capabilities and platform to create their models and for data navigation and train them, right? But over time, we realized that the maturity, skill set, and capacity to do these data incentive tasks was not with every customer, right? The time to value for them was quite, quite high. But, and we acknowledged that customers looked up to us to provide prescriptive guidance and product capabilities that will provide their desired business outcomes out of the box, right? So what we have done is, I would say in the past six months, we have changed our strategy, right? We have created our own technology, which we call for flexible integrity resolution network that customers can enable with a single click. And this form will, will start uh, suggesting potential matches out of the box, right? Form stands for flexible integrity resolution network. Customers will need not need to do any configuration. No data processing is needed from their side. No model creation or training is needed from customer side. Customers will get instant time to value, right? So that is a shift that we are seeing that, hey, we AI ML models, right? It, it's not about the technology. It's about the outcomes that customers get out of it without spending too much time processing data, creating models, training, validating, tuning it, right? We are going to do it. We are doing it out of the box for our customers. So that's interesting. Love that. Can you talk about the time it took for somebody to do that manually versus now it's all automated? Oh, yeah. So if you see, let's talk about matching, right? Which is entity resolution, right? Yeah. On an average, we, we notice that our customers, when they set up match rules in, in our engine, match rule engine to, to find potential matches, right? Whether two profiles or two customers are same or not. Customers would take up to six weeks to set up match rules, then test them against data to, I would say, then tune it further and then test it against data and then the multiple data loads would happen and things like that, right? It would take up to six weeks to get to that. And then tuning will continue for a very long time. And then this, these matches would generate tens of thousands of potential match pairs for data stewards to, to review one by one and then take decisions. What our moderns are now doing is completely taking away that setup time and starting it in an instant. And then the accuracy that we are getting out of a match of machine learning models are much higher the ML models are able to find matches that no matches were able to find before, right? Because how they are built on large language models and the technology associated with them. So we are looking at faster time to value, like no setup time, as well as faster processing of, of potential matches. So like from six weeks or from six weeks to days to hours, what's the thinking? Two, for... two hours, I would say. Wow. That's <laughs> crazy. That that's the example that I love. Like that's real life, and this is happening. It's only going to get better from here. Yeah. So that's really cool from an entity resolution standpoint. So you shared some examples, but maybe we can go a little bit deeper. Could you share like a little bit examples of AI and ML features currently with Reltio's product, and how do these features enhance user experience and outcomes? You mentioned one. Is there others? Oh yeah. So let me take two examples, and I'll probably. Do a double click on the one that I shared or just Perfect. now. So, so let's talk about that one. It's called Flexible Entity Resolution Network, which is FORN. It's efficient, essentially a large language model powered capability that automatically suggests matches out of the box with much higher accuracy, right? Basically, Flexible Entity Resolution Network, it enables instant automated semantic understanding of all entity data, whether it's customers or persons or individuals or product supplier, right? That's Any kind of entity that is there, Fern instantly understands it. And new types of matches that are rule-based, that rule-based approaches cannot find, Fern semantically understands the data and starts working, right? It's built on fine-tuned deep learning models that use data element for comparisons, produce high-quality and high-confidence match recommendations for multiple domains, as I mentioned, person, organization, others. A key thing here is that these pre-trained models incorporate zero-shot learning. Mm -hmm. What is zero-shot learning? That customers need not train this machine learning model at all, right? It will start, it will immediately start giving results or make predictions on matches as soon as it is enabled, right? So it increases data team, pro increases data team productivity, shortens or eliminates pretty much implementation time, right? 
Yeah. So that is, it just Smart. works out of the box, right? It also is like, we are completely data security and compliant for privacy as well. Customer data never leaves the tenant at all. It is always residing in the tenant. Predictions are happening locally, right? We do not send the data to Piper Scaler. We do not send data to, for any kind of training or predictions to outside reality. There is no training data shared across customers as well. Completely secure and private, right? And it has explainability built in for match recommendations of a data store wants to know why did Fawn recommend these two profiles of these two customers to be same, where explainability is built in, right? And some of the key capabilities, right? It, it has a global impact, right? With natural language processes of human, 60 human languages. Let's just take an example, right? You write the same name of a person in English and in Japanese. Fawn will be able to identify that, hey, these two are the same person. Just the name written in different characters, right? So that, that is the power of Fern that we are able to That's like a breakthrough. offer to our customer. That's that huge. Is this, this is a patent. We have already filed patent on this technology, so it's patent pending. And it's, yeah. it's going to be available to our, all our customers. That's exciting. That is exciting. Yeah. Like I've, when you start thinking about the time to value, like you said, but just in reality, the time it takes to actually do these matches and things like that, now it's hours instead of, you know weeks or months. Wow. Okay. Keep going. Yeah. What else? Yeah. Another one I would like to highlight out of the many is relative intelligence assistant, right? As you might have heard, right? Generative AI is how powerful it is to, right? To simplify customer experiences, right? So customers can tap, tap into the power of generative AI, which are these aided by large language models in the background to new levels of impact for their team members, right? Relative intelligence assistant or RIA as we call it, unlocks a new experience for users to use na natural languages to query Realtio for finding the right information and insights. With RIA, we can amplify business users, data stewards, or any persona. We can amplify the impact by eliminating hours of manually searching profiles using natural language to find relevant information, right? Whether users are looking for a particular terminology on how to do a particular task, for yeah. example, how to merge two profiles in Realtio, or actually doing data exploration to create dynamic segments, right? You can actually write natural language queries, talk to RIA or talk to Realty or show me all profiles in a particular region for a particular speciality, create any complex query and RIA will be able to understand it and present you the data that you are looking for, right? So data exploration particularly becomes really easy and simple with this, right? Gone are the days where you would set up advanced queries that would take five minutes to set up and then give you the results, right? You're yeah. Using RIA, you can just talk to like you're talking to a friend and then get all the data. Yeah, RIA is kind of like this. It, you, you guys take it, Realtor takes it a step further, but basically RIA is you type in a question and it gives you an answer, but whenever it's embedded into the product, then it can do that. Plus, there's this one example I saw that you can get different graphs or something like that. that oh, yeah. Says, can you talk a little bit about that? Because that's a really cool feature that I've never seen before besides with Realty. I'm not saying it's not happening, but for me, it was like, oh my gosh, this is on it. If a customer wanted to do it on their data, it's able to do that kind of stuff. No, well, of course. So as I said in the beginning, it's very important to understand the context of customer data and yeah. then respond based on that. So. What Realtio customers can now do is interact with RIA to get insights about the data that they already have in Realtio. So they yeah. could make, ask Realtio, hey, how many organizations in a particular industry like retail are, are my customers in, let's say, New York, right? And then Realtio, well, RIA will find that information and show you, right? Or they can say, hey, give me a bar chart of all my customers by industries. And... RIA will not only find all those customers by industry, but generate a bar chart on the fly, which customers can then add to their Realtio dashboard, or they can just flip it and take it away for whatever meeting they are headed to. Multiple different applications, right? You can query across, I would say, objects or across entities, right? Search based on their location, search based on their, any kind of attribute or any kind of property that, that is stored on the entity or on yeah. the profile. RIA can search through it and derive insights. I love it, man. We could probably talk about RIA a whole entire podcast, but we have to get to the next thing. But this is so exciting. And probably this next question, I'm going to be extremely excited to hear what you say, but can't wait to 
to see what's coming. So what enhancements involving AI and ML are planned for Relteo's product and what can our customers uh, expect? Yeah, we have a very exciting roadmap for infusing AI ML across our platform. We call it Applied AI. So we're going to invest in key three, three key areas, right? The first of is augmented entity resolution to drive 10 times the data storage productivity. We want to reduce dependency on any manual configuration of rules for entity resolution or matching and augment data stewards with tools to get their jobs done faster, right? I spoke about Fawn. That's just the first step, and we will continue enhancing and keep improving their mo these models. And these models are going to be available for every single domain out there, yes. right? Whether it's persons, organization, supply, product, going across Fishing. industries, healthcare, life sciences, anything like that, right? They will Love be it. models, right? So for every industry, every domain, we are going to have models that will help customers. The second part is improving, improving time to value, right? Applying or infusing AI in ingestion and data modeling, right? We will introduce capabilities like automatically understanding the schema of customers' data, right? Right now, customers spend a lot of time doing data modeling. We are we plan to introduce capabilities where we can just read the data and then create the data model within Relteo automatically. So that reduces a lot of configuration time to bring a new data sources into Relteo. And when you are ready to load that data into Relteo and just that data into Relteo, we are going to provide capabilities that automatically map customer data to the Relteo data model, right? So that is the next level of automation that AIML will bring, again, to reduce time to value. So the idea here is that to get the business outcomes from the Relteo that customers need, it should not take them weeks. It should take them days. And we are going to get there by using ML, machine learning, okay? Well, and third one is data governance, right? Data quality, I would say. That is an extremely important thing, right? We, we spoke earlier how important is data quality across the enterprise to make any AI initiative successful, right? So we are adding capabilities within Relteo, like anomaly detection, right? Data is constantly coming to Relteo from 20, 20, 30 sources in a typical enterprise, right? We can now create time series data and continuously measure data quality, right? And flag any anomalies based on historic references, right? So if your data quality metric like fill rate was 60, 70% over the last six months, but suddenly you bring data from a new source and the fill rate drops to 40%, we will flag it as an anomaly because our machine learning models have learned it through it. And then data stewards will have alerts and recommendations on how to fix that immediately. So that is another area that we're going to invest in on flagging anomalies, giving recommendations to data stewards, and making suggestions how to improve data quality. So these are the, some of the areas that, that we are going to invest within our roadmap over next months and quarters. I love that. If I'm wrong, just tell me, but as I think of time to value, it, it feels like Relteo is making the implementation of a data unification platform like Relteo easier, quicker, was that kind of the thinking behind some of that as well, or using Oh, yes, AI? we already, yeah, we already started with that journey last year when we introduced yeah. velocity packs, right? But that, that took some effort out of that. But whatever time is left, we, there are a lot of opportunities for bringing efficiencies for our customers, right? And AIML is, I would say, is, enables those tools for automation, right? I think yeah. that's the natural way to go. Got it. Got it. Wow. But, uh, that's really exciting. So just a couple more questions. How important is it for businesses to have a clear AI strategy and vision? So we're thinking future out, but in, in what should it include? What should be included in an AI robust strategy? Yeah, I think that's a great question, right? I think personally that the most critical strategy, even before any AI strategy, is the data strategy. Data strategy comes before any AI strategy. Customers should develop a comprehensive data strategy that addresses data collection, storage, governance, quality, security, and privacy consideration, identifying data sources, establishing standards and policies, ensuring accessibility and reusability of data. Reusability or interoperability is extremely important for AI initiatives, right? That is very really important, right? And where that's where products like Relteo have a major role to play, right? 
customers should define a clear vision for, for AI adoption and an articulate specific measurable goals and objectives aligned with business priorities. So I believe there is there was a time when AI was or more of it was an experiment, but the kind of right. investments customers are doing, they have to be aligned to what kind of outcomes that you are expecting out of your after a few investments, right? Whether you want to improve efficiencies, grow revenue, it has to align with something, right? Revenue growth, cost reduction, customer satisfaction, customer experience, competitor differentiation. Align it. Otherwise, it is very hard to justify the investment, right? Yeah. Then customers also need to assess and invest the necessary technology, infrastructure, tools, and platforms to support AI development and deployment, right? We have seen there's so many offerings all across the board, right? Whether customers want to do it themselves or go to hypers or niche players just doing AI and ML, right? We, we spoke about earlier, right? Should we do it in-house or, or do use off the shelf? That's a key consideration that customers should consider in their AI strategy, right? One of the key things also that that is challenging at this moment is availability of right talent and skills, right? Building a skilled workforce with expertise in AI, including data science, machine learning, software engineering, and domain knowledge is, is they're going to be very critical, right? So they need to start recruitment, start investing within the talent that is already there in their company and generally develop a culture of AI literacy, I would say, right? Yeah, I would say one, one more thing that is really important is considering ethical and responsible AI. We spoke about earlier about biases, right? We have to be really responsible on how we are looking at customer data in particular, right? Making sure we, we invest the right technology and resources to have security privacy built in. We are not letting bias creep in into our models. And we always have a human centric design with full transparency and accountability so that your AI initiatives are, are well respected and accepted across the enterprise as well. Really important. And yeah, these are some of the things that I believe are, are going to be key in developing a robust AI strategy and customers need to consider while building such strategy. Yeah, that's good. So last question for you, Sushant. So what challenges do businesses face when scaling AI solutions across their operations? And how can they address some of these challenges effectively? I think you might've hit on some of this stuff already. Yeah, I, th I think we did cover, but yeah, maybe I can take a couple of examples here. That I'd say the biggest one that we see every single day when we talk to our customers is data silos and integration issues, right? Mm -hmm. Many businesses struggle with data fragmentation, fragmentation across different departments and systems, right? But the biggest problems we see is use case specific output within customers. <laughs> they, they set up their own data systems and then it is generating data, which is duplicate and not of a good quality. And uh, you can't really simply run the initiative there, right? You need high quality data. So that's where data unification platforms that will to you can help customers unify fragmented data from across the enterprise and provide trusted real-time data for AI initiatives, right? Realtio's data products like Customer 360, they enable customers to deploy this interoperable data again across the enterprise for business responsiveness, right? So very important to remove these data silos and introduce a concept of data product ownership so that it is all data is always reusable or interoperable across the enterprise. The so second is lack of standardization, right? Inconsistent data formats and processes across departments, again, can create roadblocks when integrating AI solutions into existing workflows, right? Everybody is generating customer data in different formats and nobody's following any standards, right? So I would say if you look at principles like data products and data mesh, right? Customers should develop standardized data formats or data contracts, metrics and processes to streamline this AI integration across their departments. And something, again, I alluded earlier, right? Skills development and talent acquisition, right? This might become, right, a big challenge, right? So the expertise required to build, maintain, and manage AI solutions can be scarce, right? This is might struggle to find a retail data scientists, engineers, and AI specialists needed for large-scale adoption. And we, I think we, we all read on how difficult it was to find a certain point data scientist in Bay Area itself, right? Need to, like, plan for it, right? Companies need to, business need to invest in skill development, whether it's in-house or looking for skills outside training program, 
and talent acquisition initiatives to build a skilled workforce with expertise in AI to prepare for the future. I think that's going to be key, right? So these are some of the, I would say, challenges and how these challenges can be addressed effectively by my customers. So Sean, wow, that was some great insights about what Reltio is doing from an AI ML. Great insights just from your thought leadership on the future outlook of AI and, and how businesses should think about it. I really appreciate you coming on, Sushant. So thank you so much. Oh, it was a great discussion, Chris. That was you know, some really insightful questions. Thanks for asking and thanks for having me here. Yeah, of course. We'll do it again. And so thank you everyone for tuning in to another data-driven podcast. I'm Chris Detzel. Don't forget to rate and review us. Thank you, everyone.